Okay, welcome to part two. In this part we're going to take this brick over here and we're going to transform it into a home. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to switch from shaded mode back to wireframe mode, 2D wireframe, and it's just because I work better in this mode. I can kind of see what I'm doing better. And it's up to you what mode you prefer to work in. And we're going to remove the middle part using the subtract command. So you're going to want to type in SUB on the keyboard. So you have your subtract tool, press enter. And then you have to first click on what you want to keep. So I want to keep this box over here. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to press enter. And then you have to press on what you want to remove. So I want to remove this interior box. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to press enter. And if you did it correctly, when I go ahead and check back shade in mode, you'll notice that there is a cut in the box. And that's kind of what we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a door. I'm going to jump back into 2D wireframe mode and we're going to draw out a door. And if you think about a door, a door is just a rectangle. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool, REC, and I'm going to press enter. Right away you're going to notice that I can click on anything I want but I want to be on this plane. So when I'm hovering the mouse over here, you're going to notice that this box is blue. That means that I'm working on this plane. Also, you might notice that I, I want to try to click on a point down here, but I'm not able to, which is going to be a problem. And the reason why is because we don't have everything selected. So let me go ahead and adjust my screen here re real quick. Okay, there we go you are going to want to press on this arrow down here your snapping options so I'm going to press on that and I'm going to go to object snap settings and click on that you want to make sure that you have pretty much most of these checked in so I'm just going to go ahead and check in all of these and these are just alternative ways of selecting objects on your shape so I think these are the ones I want if not I can just jump back here but I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I'm going to reactivate my rectangle tool as I may have lost it. Okay. And you'll notice right away that we have the midpoint, but I actually wanted my door a little bit more over here. So let me just jump back to my snap settings and I'm going to activate everything by pressing select all. Press OK. Reactivate my rectangle tool. And there we go. I'm able to select any point on this. So you're going to want to make sure that the shape is still blue so I can see that it's blue and then you're going to want to find a reference point let's say this one and I'm going to click here and I'm going to draw out that rectangle door just like that now no house would be complete without a window so let's go ahead and draw in a couple more rectangles so rectangle enter and I'm going to draw a window right over here and it turns out that that window is perfect so I'm going to go ahead and copy that window and that's pretty easy to do we just have to use the copy command so I'm going to type in copy enter I'm going to select this window enter and then I'm going to select a reference point so I'm going to select the door because it's on the plane that I want it to be on and you'll notice I can move the window and it's using the door as kind of a reference. You see that line? It's using it as a reference so I can draw my window in the exact same you know, length from where it is to the top. So I'm going to press that in, press escape a few times, and that's looking pretty nice. Now just like before we're going to extrude these objects out so I'm going to use the extrude command, EXT, enter, and I'm going to click on this, this, and this. I'm going to press enter one more time and we're going to extrude these out such that they're about halfway through the building. Doesn't have to go the, th the entire way, we just want them about, you know, maybe there or so because we're just going to immediately remove these. And the remove command, like I said before, is subtract. So SUB, enter, and I'm going to click on this, this, and this. And I'm going to press enter. And if you did it correctly, I'm going to press a few escapes, you go over to your shaded mode um, it should be removed but it's not so let's hop back over to the subtract or to the 2d wireframe mode and you know mistakes happen 
and I'm realizing now that I broke my rule. So let's type that in again. Um, SUB, enter. Um, you first have to click on what you want to keep. So I clicked immediately what I wanted to remove, which isn't the case. So I want to keep this like outside wall. And now I'm going to press enter. And then you click on what you want to remove. So I'm going to want to remove this, this, and this. I'm going to press enter again. And now you can tell right away that these have been cut out of the object. Like so. Lovely. So we've just cut out things that we don't quite want and we've created openings that you know are useful to have. Now alternatively we can add things to this house so if I jump into 2D wireframe mode and let's say I wanted a door sticking out of this building I can just use the rectangle tool enter and I'm going to specify it on this plane you can notice what's lit up in blue and I'm going to draw in let's say a door like this use the extrude command on this and maybe draw in a tiny door so that you know yes it's the same color but like you you can get the feel that hey there's supposed to be a door over there or other useful things like that so it's a good idea to like experiment with extruding and cutting out things to try to get some nifty cool features I don't know, make a table, make a, make a chair, things like that. However, let's, for the time being, go ahead and add a roof because no house would be complete without, you know, a roof. Um, in order to draw a roof, we're going to want to be in 2D wireframe mode and we're also going to want to use the, let's say, I think the polyline tool would be fine for this. And this is going to be our first time modifying this axis over here. A lot of people don't use this method, but it's the method I like using. Um, so if you take a look at this axis over here, you're going to notice the X, the Y, and the Z. And you're only allowed to draw 2D objects in the X and the Y. So if I wanted to draw, you know, a roof over here, I really can't because the roof isn't in the X and the Y. It's more in the Z and the Y. But I can't draw in the Z and the Y. I can only draw in the X and the Y. However, I can move these. So I can get them in the X and the Y simply by clicking on this axis and I'm going to grab on the X and I'm going to roll it up here like that. Okay, so now if I'm looking at my building, you know, like so, you'll notice that I have the X and the Y in that direction. If you don't, you won't be able to, you know, draw it as as fluently as I do. You're going to have to like kind of mess around with it a little bit. So let's get started. I'm going to actually use the line tool. So let me click over here, type in line, hit enter, and I'm going to draw out I'm going to draw out a a triangle. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to the midpoint um, which is depicted by a triangle. Click over there. And I'm going to drag this upward like so. Click once over here, and then I'm going to go over to this endpoint and click over there. Um, as well, I'm going to click at this point. Whoops, let me get my line tool back on. Line tool. Click on this point. Then click on this point. Move up here. Click on that point, And move back to my end point and click there. So I have two triangles in place right now. And they look, they look awesome. Now let's go ahead and extrude that using the extrude tool. I'm going to select my shape. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to draw in my mesh like so. And if we take a look at the shaded mode, you're going to notice that we do have our triangular roof. You can go ahead and draw in a triangle here and you can seal this up if you'd like and create a closed opening for that as well. But we do now have a semi, you know, slightly unrealistic but functional home that, you know, utilizes a bunch of tools. So there you have it.
We've designed a simple base home in AutoCAD. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, hop over to video tutorial number three, where I'm going to be talking about spheres and about useful design involving them. Till later, see ya.